What's up everybody? Today we're going to be building a carbon fiber splitter. As you can see we've already gotten started with cutting some carbon fiber. Um, almost everything I've gotten for as far as tools and uh, materials and everything has been from Composite Envisions. Um, a couple of things that I recommend you could get is um, little cutting tools like this. It will save your life. Um, save you a lot of time cutting carbon fiber. Make it a lot nicer, easier to work with. Um, over here we have uh, my carbon fiber table. Um, we're going to be doing vacuum infusion. So this is a, just a steel table that we put a tempered piece of glass on top. Um, we already have our diffusers, which I used a two-part foam and some fiberglass to mold those out of uh, Professional Awesome uh, diffusers. This is a new design that they have coming out. Um, should be available pretty soon. It's already got mold release on it. And we're going to be doing uh, laying up our carbon fiber all over top of it, our core material, and then more carbon fiber over top and then vacuum bagging the entire thing. Now let's get started with our layup. The first layer is for looks kind of, this is a 3K I believe, 200 gram uh, layer of carbon fiber. It's just kind of for looks, a little bit smaller, looks nice. And then we'll start building up some thicker layers after this. Uh, as you can see, I'm using the little electric cutter. Uh, it works great for cutting carbon fiber. It's way faster than scissors and makes a much cleaner line so I definitely recommend getting one of those. This is a thicker layer. I believe this was either a 6k or 12k in a 5 or 600 gram uh, weight so it's a lot thicker. This is more for strength trying to build up some strength in the, in the piece. So we do two layers of this kind of cutting the same thing as we did before. I already had my diffusers, I kind of had a template before from a previous splitter, so I just measured and put those in there and taped them to the table. I kind of came up with this on my own, this style of a mold, um, using the table and taping the diffusers onto the top of the table and then molding everything together, so we'll see how this works. You want to make sure you get all the carbon fiber to lay nice into those grooves. Uh, you don't want any bridging. I had pre-cut my foam core before. This is a 3 8 inch scrimmed and scored foam piece. So I just need to lay that in there and make sure the carbon fiber is nice and tight. This will be the shape of my splitter, the foam core. I used some 3M spray tack to get these to sit in the right spot and stay in place. Just laid all these pieces back in. Just trying to build up some strength, uh, some depth in the carbon fiber, which will add some rigidity to the part. Now, one thing I didn't do is I didn't wrap my edges, which I need to do next time. Uh, after I infuse the whole part, you can see the edges. Uh, when I cut off the, the hard pieces of the carbon fiber, you can still see the foam underneath, so you definitely need to wrap your edges somehow. I haven't figured out a nice way to do it yet, so that's kind of why I did it this way. Make sure you vacuum up all the strands that you cut off. Anything that you leave in that mold will stay there. Uh, you'll be able to see it if there's any strands underneath or on top of the mold. They'll be resin right in with your part. So here I'm just laying up a top layer. Uh, sprayed some 3M adhesive over top and just start on one side and work your way out. Making sure not to stick anything past where you're at. Otherwise you're gonna end up dealing with the mess. Carbon fiber is pretty difficult to work with. It is just a weave, nothing's really holding it together. So you need to kind of be gentle with it, be careful with it. If you start pushing and pulling on it, you can get wrinkles. Uh, this is all a twill weave, which twill is the easiest to get around molds and kind of contour stuff. Uh, as you can see, you can kind of push it around and move it. It forms the things pretty nicely. Ran just a little bit short on carbon fiber in that one area, so piecing a little piece in. One more layer, this is the 3K I believe. So just kind of for looks, still adds strength, but just a little nicer looking weave. Using the 3M adhesive again, 
trying to get the carbon fiber to lay into those pieces nicely and not too many wrinkles. Make sure you press down all your edges, get everything sitting nice the way you want it. And again, vacuum up all your little strands, make sure they're not gonna end up in your part. Next, we'll put on our double-sided tacky tape for the infusion bag. After the tacky tape's down, we need to put down our peel ply. This is the layer that kind of gets infused in with the part, and then you're able to peel this off of the carbon fiber. It kind of separates it and gives it a little nice matte finish on the top. Now, just like the carbon fiber, you want it to lay nice in those spots. Uh, it needs to be kind of contoured in with the edges of the diffusers, which is kind of tough with a weave that doesn't really not like a carbon fiber weave, it's not a twill weave, it's just a flat sheet. So you need to kind of use wrinkles and stuff like that to get it to sit nice. Next up is the flow media and the spiral tubing. Uh, the bottom part of the video is where the epoxy is going to be going into the mold and then over where I'm working is going to be the where the air is being sucked out from the vacuum. This clear part is our bagging material, so I'm starting in the middle over here and doing some pleats. Uh, make sure you cut your pleats the same size. That way our bag remains square. Uh, this bag isn't too much bigger than my work area on the table, so you need to be careful that you don't run out of bag somewhere. So I'm doing two pleats on each side of the diffusers. You're gonna need extra material there. And I also do a pleat on the short side to give it a little more material as well. This all needs to be able to sit flat uh, against all the contours and go up and over the diffusers, so it's Kind of important to make sure your pleats are the same size, the bag stays square as you go across the whole mold. You need to wrap your induction point, uh, make sure, making sure this is this is the toughest part of the whole infusion process is making sure you seal everything and you have no air leaks. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this type of stuff, but this is kind of the easiest way I've found to do just wrapping the tube in the double-sided tape. And now I'm just gonna go around the whole table, kind of pushing down on all of the tape, all of the pleats, making sure everything has got a good seal and we're not gonna have any air leaks anywhere. Now I'm gonna get my vacuum hose hooked up and we'll suck down the part a little bit, making sure we don't have any holes and making sure that the vacuum bag is sitting down nice and we're not bridging anywhere. Uh, make sure it's all in those grooves of the diffusers and not getting held up and stretched across parts. Now you can turn the vacuum off and let a little air in there to let the vacuum bag loosen a little bit so you can pull it into the areas it needs to go to. I did decide to put two more exits on it on the top of the diff each diffuser. That way it's pulling air out of the top. It's kind of air might get trapped in there is my thinking, so I was trying to get all the epoxy out that I could. So we're getting everything hooked up now, all the hoses, and we're gonna pull down the bag all the way this time and listen for leaks. You can look at your air pressure on your tank and see if it's pulling any more air. You can turn the vacuum off and plug both sides and see if your air pressure drops. As you can see, I have a couple leaks that I'm trying to fix. Uh, you can add tape to it. You can try to find the, the little spot that the air is leaking, but they're tough to find sometimes. Now, I did have trouble with a couple leaks, and through past experiences, I've found that if you start the infusion process, you can see the bubbles where the air is coming in, and sometimes you can stop them. So after about a half an hour of trying to find these leaks, I just I needed to get the part done still. So I just decided to go ahead with the with the resin, with the infusion process, and try to find the leaks later. So I decided to chance it. We have the infusion going, uh, just like a one gallon bucket it's pulling from. And I noticed right away that my hose is entirely too big. The infusion is going way too quick. You want it to go a little bit slower. This whole infusion should probably take a half an hour or longer. And in the first one minute, um, I already got most of the most of the epoxy from the gallon jug in, 
and you can see I'm struggling everything's kind of going to shit right away we got a pretty bad air leak that I'm trying to find and they're not getting fixed so I'm kind of in a hurry pretty stressful situation right here when you have this much money wrapped up in a part and it's kind of going badly really quick bucket ends up running out of epoxy really fast so I need to mix up a new batch. This epoxy will last about 90 minutes before it starts gelling up so I do have time but the effusion is just going way too quick with the size holes that I used at the beginning. Still trying to find holes and as you can see my bucket has just run out of epoxy and you get air everywhere inside the part. So here I am pretty frustrated I clamped the front of it and turn off the vacuum bag to mix up a new batch of epoxy. So I get another batch of epoxy mixed up and this time I decide to put a little clamp on the intake to slow down the epoxy coming into the mold, which did help a little bit. keep trying to fix holes but I'm not really winning. Uh, I decided to clamp off the diffuser suction points once the epoxy reached that so it will stop pulling from there. Get both of those done so it's only pulling from the back of the mold then. All right, welcome back to the present. I uh, did this video about 2018, 2019, so four or five years ago, I molded this uh, splitter. We're gonna spray you the details of the demolding process. Uh, it took probably two, three hours. Um, it's just a lot of painstaking, like trying to pry stuff up, trying to get it off the mold, um, trying to get these the carbon fiber out of these channels. These little 90 degree corners is pretty tough, so it's just a lot of cussing and swearing. Um, trying to be tedious, but also using a lot of muscle and getting frustrated, so spare you guys that detail. Um, the mold came out okay. We did end up ruining um, my diffuser mold. As you can see, we broke one in half here. Needed to use just a little more dense foam. This is five pound foam. Probably should have went with 10 or 20 pound foam. But everything came out pretty decent. Now the splitter did turn out okay. Um, it wasn't ruined. We did use this part for a couple years in street mod. Um, there is a lot of air gaps in here, inside the mold and inside the foam. Now the splitter does have a couple years of use on it, so it's a little bit dirty, kind of beaten up. But as you can see, the mold turned out pretty nice. Um, because of the holes in the bag, it did pull some epoxy out of here. This all would have been filled in with the peel ply and stuff, but all this on top seems pretty good. We didn't have any bridging with the carbon fiber kind of in the corners here. Um, you see the bag didn't all fully get in to the side here, so it pulled a bunch of epoxy out of there. Need to make sure my bag is all the way into the corners. So let's flip it over and look at the bottom side. Now this is the bottom side of the splitter where all the magic happens. You can see everything looks pretty smooth on the bottom. There's no bridging. Everything's pretty smooth. The transition's going in. Uh, the corners are nice and smooth and defined. The carbon fiber all fit in there pretty well. All the 90 degree corners look good. They're nice and sharp. And the other side, you can clean some of this up if you went after it with a sander. I didn't sand it, but spots like this where there's kind of tape on those diffusers, on the molds, you can kind of see, you can just sand this off and clear coat it. It would smooth it out a little bit better. And this is a couple cutouts of some previous splitters. Uh, this one was infused perfectly, didn't have any holes in it or anything. And as you can see, everything is filled in. All the little gaps in the foam core. And in the foam, epoxy went through all of that and filled it all in. And this is a cutout of this splitter. So you can kind of see a bunch of little holes, some of the voids there in the foam core. 
in the scoring. So a lot of epoxy got pulled out of it, so the part really isn't as strong as it should be. I did weigh this part, and kind of a side effect of the epoxy getting pulled out of the mold is it is very light. This whole splitter only weighs 13 pounds. Now because it didn't infuse correctly, uh, it's not as strong as it should be, so I did have to use some more mounting points. Um, I had a bar going across here with three spots of mounting. It are two in the front with the Professional Awesome Splitter Rods. And then I also did mount out out here, uh, up by the wheel. Um, it's pretty strong, but when you have these 90 degree corners, that kind of weakens the part quite a bit. And you do need to hold this. It's not going to support the, do the downforce that the these diffusers are making all the way out on the outside. And I also had two more spots back here by the subframe that I mounted to the car. Now, as you guys can see, this is a pretty complex process. Um, a lot of stuff I kind of made up as I went. I watched a lot of videos from Composite and Visions, bought a couple of other DVDs, and kind of combined a few things together to come up with this process. And as you can see, it worked. It just lacked some execution in a couple of areas, especially the sealing of the bag. Um, if that would have worked, this part would have been a lot better. It might not have needed so many mounting points. We've set quite a few track records with this splitter on the Evo uh, in time attack for grid life. So I'll link a couple of videos. You guys can watch some of the higher speed corners. This splitter is, is pretty ridiculous and I'm, I'm pretty proud of this part. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Nice. Yes.